Hey, my boy, Manning CLNS Media. Rob, these playoffs, feels like he's day to day. You've had the good days, the bad days. It seemed like he was closer to himself in game one after the layoff and treatment and all that. Can you just kind of take me inside, like the daily, you know, back and forth between you and him and just some of the treatment he's getting and sort of just what's, what's allowing him to get out there. And I know you're giving him a lot of encouragement too, just to, off what he's playing through. Yeah, I think, first of all, the most important thing is the time. Uh, in between the games, time off after the Miami series. So uh, that's how he reacts best, obviously, is with rest and treatment. And so um, not having every other day for a while since game three of Milwaukee, that should benefit him going forward. And then from there, it's just discussion. And you know, I've let him know pretty much play play the game. If, if you don't need to practice, shoot around. I don't need to see you on the court uh, for the rest of the season until game time, if that benefits you. So he kind of gets what he needs as far as that. Uh, watches what he needed to watch and they're really more mental than physical. Brian on the left. He may, is there anything you can do at this point to fix what seems to be um, an issue in these third quarters? I mean, we understood and, and made it pretty clear that Golden State is the best third quarter team in the play postseason this year. Um, you know, it seems like the little things come back to bite us at times and that quarter specifically coming out with a few turnovers. And then they got, you know, four four offensive rebounds that led to baskets, directly led to baskets. And so um, Looney had his way a little bit there. He had a good first half overall. They had six, but to get four or five in that quarter, you know, and the extra shots obviously hurt us. But, um, yeah, that's something that we need to do. We talk about starts of games, and, and third quarter is not much different from that. So uh, got to be better in that area, not get ourselves behind the eight ball, and not have to play uphill the rest of the way. Jay? You're a very direct guy. It seems like you just want to put stuff out there on the table and then kind of deal with it. How did what was the process like of getting the players to do that with each other um, and just be direct and honest with stuff with each other and kind of get through all that together? Yeah, I think uh, they're the fact that the core has been around each other for a while. They could kind of do that. Um, it was just a matter of delivery and accountability with yourself. As, you know, you say something, but you're doing the same. You guys are going to look at that a, a certain kind of way. And so I think once they saw it coming from me and we encourage dialogue and, you know, debate, discussion and criticism, it's uh, how you deliver it. But we're all on the same page with the same goal. And so it's more so how you, you know, deliver and receive the message. And so uh, I've mentioned we don't really have a lot of sensitive guys and they get on each other. And I've encouraged that not to only come from the coaching staff, but to come from amongst themselves and you can see that in every time out and on the court, uh, in the locker room, every time we come to a huddle, come to halftime, they're already in there talking things out before we get there. And so that growth has been good for our group. Rohan? Uh, Ime, you guys obviously had a lot of success in the fourth in game one, playing smaller. I think Peyton played more minutes in that quarter than he did the last two games in the Miami series. When you have success riding a lineup like you did in game one, how does that influence your rotation in game two? Like, does it make you want to go to that lineup sooner, or do you, do you have to let the game dictate your decision making? Yeah, it's, it's not really a preconceived thing going in. Uh, we have some lineups set, but um, I think our versatility in general um, helps us out in that regard and, and kind of let the game play out. And so uh, we extend the lead with Marcus on the bench uh, with Peyton and Derek, and they're playing well, and downsized without the five. And so that really worked for us, obviously. But um, you know, we, we gave credit to Marcus sitting there ready, cheering on. Obviously, he wants to be in the game to impact it, but sees what that group is doing. And so that's kind of the selfless nature of our team as we've grown throughout the year. But uh, it's a game by game thing. We understand we can go downsize with Derek. Um, if Grant is playing well on both ends, we can play him or go double bigs. And so I think our flexibility as far as that is kind of dictated by the game and how it plays out. Next question on the right. John Corrales, Boston Sports Journal. You mean, when you look at that first quarter, um, do you think the mistakes that were made is something that you can clean up with your normal starting personnel, or do you think you need to make an adjustment there so you can clean up the things that you were doing wrong, leaving step open and stuff like that? Yeah, I think it didn't have anything to do with starters or, or who was in the game at the time. It was a lot of transition and non-communication between the guards. So that's not going to change regardless of you know if we do something different with the big. So it was a lack of communication there. Um, other than getting one cleaner look late with Daniel Tice, where we were supposed to be switching, um, it was a lot to do with guard guard actions and transition early offense and us not communicating as well as Clay getting some shots as well. So um, nothing we can't clean up. Obviously, don't want to give up six threes and give up 21 points, but 
big picture. You know, we were down four, 32 to 28, and he went off for that. So we were still in, in good good striking range overall. We knew if we limited him, we, we'd obviously be in much better shape. And then the other part was offensively, we were fine. So scoring the 28, so it'll only be down four. We felt good about that, knowing we let him get off to that extent. Tim up front. Tim Reynolds, Associated Press. Ime, I, I know it's all different now because of threes, but we've seen more quarters get away from teams in this playoff than, than ever before. Is, is there a reason for it other than the threes? Is it how maddening? I mean, you've been on both sides of it in this postseason as a coach. How, when, when these huge runs that we're seeing more and more often now happen, I guess, how, how surprising is it that, that it's not just a fluke, that it's, it it's just seems like it's just part of the game now? Yeah, I mean, teams can obviously uh, get off to those leads because of the three. I think it's exaggerated because of that. Uh, a lot of times, especially in the Miami series or, you know, a series where we've had some four quarters, it's been a lot of self-inflicted stuff. And so if we look at, you know, Brooklyn, Miami, Milwaukee, and now this series, it's a lot of the same things, same things, taking care of the ball, uh, not letting teams get on transition, limiting, limiting them to one shot, shot and um, offensively that, that hurts us when they get those uh, second, third opportunities. And so it goes – it kind of comes down to the same things with us, but the threes can exaggerate it for sure and, and extend that lead. So uh, we, we harp on the little things that have won and lost us games through, throughout series so far. And I think the threes are part of it. It can get you back in the game as well. Teams are going to play a certain way regardless of if they have the lead or not. And it, it affects it for sure, but we try to harp on the little things that have hurt us more so than uh, Golden State being a prolific shooting team. Last couple of questions, Vince on the right. Vince Goodwill, Yahoo Sports. He, he may, I think you put Marcus on Draymond at some point to sort of cut off the dribble handoffs and the relocations uh, that, that he does to set other shooters up for threes. How much of your defensive strategy is focused on making him aggressive or making him more of a shooter as opposed to a facilitator? Yeah, it's a big part of it. Um, you know, we were comfortable with pretty much all of our wings or, or guards on him. Uh, like I said, we are a bigger team and a physical team as far as that. So we don't feel it's a cross match with Marcus by any means or a mismatch there. And the bottom line is we put Marcus on bigs throughout the season to switch on to their guards at times. And so that's something in our back pocket that we feel comfortable doing. Um, knowing he's a, one of their main initiators and getting everybody involved and Marcus has such great recognition of when to switch on to guys of communication and kind of take things away. So that's something that we go to late in games a lot. And then in general, um, you know, helping often when it's appropriate and trying to make him be more of a scorer and understanding it's, it's a tough one. You help off, but he's going right into a dribble handoff action or a pin down action. You have to be able to help and get back. And that's one thing we harped on coming into the series, and they did a good job last game. Last question. Uh, you know, you played for a lot of teams, coached a lot of teams. Um, what do you think is about this group that makes it just so unaffected by being on the road? Is it like something in certain players' DNA is something where you do it a few times and start to believe, hey, we've done this a bunch. Like, what is it about this group that it really doesn't matter where you are? It's a little bit of both. I think uh, in general, we have guys that pretty, pretty much stay even killed, don't get rattled too easily. Um, you know, we, I harped on it early in the season to get the real warrior mentality and that guys have bought into that. But the bottom line is if we defend at a certain level, um, you know, we should be in good shape regardless of where we play. And so that's the thing. We can limit runs in those 38 point quarters. You look at the others, you know, 22 and, and 16, we're in good shape. So just try to limit the runs. Um, I think offensively and in general, we have a confident group. And then defensively, you know, we can lock in. So that usually uh, gives us good results. But uh, love that part of it. Um, love where we're at, eight and two on the road in the playoffs. And it obviously benefits us to get on the road and get those wins and go back home and take care of business.